North Carolina Smash can tell you. Regalo, the Lucas main who made a run all the way to 9th this past weekend at Super Smash Con 2022, didn't come out of nowhere. Smash super nerds and or fans of the channel may recall him from our last Smash Around the World segment, where he was just one of the many weird meta champions to make his way into top 8 at a recent regional. This one, North Carolina's own Just Roll With It 2022. But for many, last weekend was their introduction to this explosive Lucas, who made his name to Smash fans not just for his highly technical Lucas play, but as one of the few players to stand up to the menace haunting SmashCon's top 128 the one and only Minecraft Steve. As part of his run to 9th place, arguably the greatest result for any Lucas player in Smash's competitive history, Regalo also showed some of the finest anti-Steve counterplay we've seen yet, taking down both Yanni and Waidu. Let's dive into the tape from this weekend and see just how he did it. Yanni is still in desperate need for some materials. Remember, when Steve is playing Smash, you gotta have the materials. You're playing Minecraft, right? You gotta upgrade in the chart here, but not even a gold mine here for Yanni. And of all the characters to keep the pressure up, it's Lucas. Lucas? <laughs> this is so crazy to me. You can't blame Charles and Scabs for their surprise. Lucas has been one of Ultimate's most competitively irrelevant characters since the game's release. Even in the post-lockdown landscape, where players like Francis Neetox have been starting to push the game's meta, no Lucas player had managed to push past 13th at an offline major as of the conclusion of the PGR UV3 season back in June. And even that result from Japanese player Rinkururu at Mayasuma top number 7 in May came with the help of a heavy dose of Min Min. Things weren't much brighter pre-lockdown. The top Lucas runs at S tiers in the PGR U V1 and V2 respectively were a 49th from Mikos at Momocon 2019 and a 33rd from Chaco Taco at the Big House 9. Chaco Taco in particular has continued to push Lucas in the post-lockdown meta, placing 17th at CEO 2021 and adding to the character's strong Smash Con weekend with a 49th place finish. But Regalo's result was historic. Even going back to Lucas's debut in Brawl, ninth at an S-tier event like SmashCon is nearly unprecedented. The aforementioned Mikos, one of the character's pioneers and a true force in Lucas's best format, doubles, picked up Lucas's peak Brawl result with a ninth place at Skatar in 2012, a tournament that featured less than 10% as many players as SmashCon 2022's Ultimate Bracket. In Smash 4, Lucas's most successful representative was Japan's Taiheita, who pushed Lucas's footstool-heavy punish game as far as it could go, landing at 58th on Smash 4's all-time PGR 100. His hit list included Abadongo, Mars, Renai, and Kameme, among others, and he was a regular in top 8s at Japanese events like the Sumabato series. In his one trip to the States, he finished 17th at Super Smash Con 2016, one of Lucas's best S-tier results, along with Mikos's 17th place at 2GG Hyrule Saga. Not only did Regalo make what seems to safely be the greatest run Lucas has ever seen in competitive Smash, he did so at one of the most loaded brackets of the year, and one littered with the character everybody is convinced is the game's new king in Steve. How did Regalo, piloting a mostly forgotten character that languishes in the bottom of most tier lists, flip everything on its head this weekend? Flipping, it turns out, had a lot to do with it. Regalo demonstrated the power of Lucas's back air and its particular use against Steve within the first 30 seconds of each matchup. The mindlessness of Steve's minecart was a hot topic this weekend, as players of all skill levels collapsed in the face of constant minecarts out of hit stun. Within the first 30 seconds, both Yanni and Waidu lost their stocks for a habit that had been winning them games all weekend long. It's a two-part explanation. First off, Regalo's movement and consistently well-timed fastfalls allowed him to put on smooth early pressure, using intelligent drift on his PK fires and forward airs to keep him safe while preventing Steve from mining or building too strong of a wall. That earned Regalo this position against both players. But even this is usually a very strong position for Steve. Minecart isn't a particularly fast move at frame 18, but it has just about everything else you could ask for. The cart itself has 8.4 HP of armor, and Steve can take 60 units worth of knockback armor in those first 18 frames. After those 18 frames, the minecart becomes a constantly active, albeit negatively disjointed hitbox that stuffs any move that takes too long to get into position. 
Many characters can get Steve into this position. Nobody, not a single other character in Smash Ultimate, can do what Lucas does once Steve is off stage. Even though Regalo couldn't catch the spike hitbox on Bear the first time against either opponent, the move's speed, the positioning of the move's hitbox, and the way Lucas' hurtbox shifts when he flips, makes for the perfect anti-minecart storm. How rare is it to do what Lucas is able to do here? Place a spike hitbox above Steve within the 18 frames before minecart would interrupt. Well, here's every single aerial in Smash Ultimate with frame data. 445 moves in total. Not everybody in Ultimate has a spike, but many characters do, and some have multiple. Of the 79 spiking aerials in this game, a solid 64 of them come out in 17 frames or fewer. Not a bad start, but that's not enough to guarantee a punish from this position. Hitbox positioning matters too, and there isn't a single character in the game that can both jump above Steve from this position and get the dare out in time. Not even Ivysaur and their absurd frame 10 dare. And even Little Max Lightning Quick Frame 7 Dare, the fastest of these spikes, is not going to KO Steve at any relevant percents. So, we need to narrow things down. Since there aren't any spiking up airs or neutral airs, we'll have to limit ourselves to forward airs and back airs. Just five, uh, side aerials in the game fit this criteria. The fastest ones, we Fits and Steve's, will almost never result in a spike. Steve's spike hitbox on Fair doesn't come out until a few frames into the move's activity. We Fits spike hitbox on Fair comes out at the same time as the others, but good luck hitting it from below. That leaves three remaining challengers. Mario has a well-placed hitbox above him on frame 17 of his forward air. It's the frame 16 hitbox that's the problem. To get your spike read on a Steve mashing card out of hit stun with Mario's fair, not only do you have to time and place your frame 17 hitbox perfectly to beat the frame 18 minecart, you also have to avoid the frame 16 sour spot that will harmlessly send Steve horizontally. It's a level of precision that often simply isn't worth risking, given the strengths of Steve's reversals. Perhaps it shouldn't be a surprise that outside of Lucas, the best anti-minecart spike belongs to Yoshi. Japan's Yoshidora, one of the featured players from our recent Japanese 50 players to watch, has been the most consistent competition for the country's top Steve main, Akola. Yoshidora won three of their seven sets last season, and took June Major Mayasuma Top 8. At Mayasuma Top 7, Yoshidora sent Akola to losers, and of the six stocks he took across games 2 and 3, four of them came from Fair. It is a uniquely effective move against Steve for one simple reason. Look at the height on the spike hitbox. Indeed, only one other side air in the game can really match it, and it belongs to this episode's hero, Lucas. At one frame faster, Lucas Bear has a bit more leeway with timing than Yoshi Fair, and the hurtbox shift even allows Lucas to potentially dodge the minecart if he's a bit late with his swing. And, unlike Yoshi's fair, it has the perfect sour spot, capable of giving Lucas another shot to seal the stock with good spacing, as Regalo showed off over and over again. The fact that both Waidu and Yanni ate Lucas' back airs within the set's first 30 seconds put Regalo in the driver's seat as the sets progressed. Immediately, both players had to start thinking about how to replace the hit-stun option that had done so much for them in previous rounds. The newfound recitance to mash minecart then opened the door for Lucas's other neutral tools, like forward air, up air, and his unique Zare, to provide the openings that Regalo needed to punish the Steves off stage. Regalo found ways to use just about everything in Lucas's toolkit. Against Waidu, who admitted that he is still having trouble consistently making three block high walls in pressure situations, Regalo leaned on PK Freeze, making Waidu's two block walls practically useless. Against Yanni, who responded to PK Freeze by building a massive five high tower in game three of their set, Regalo adapted by using Lucas's lightning fast forward tilt to open a hole in the wall before plugging it with PK Fire, denying any attempt to minecart through. The list doesn't end there either. Lucas's forward smash reflector can throw an anvil mashed out of hit stun right back into Steve's face. Lucas's down smash might be the single best tool for interrupting an ironless Steve recovery hitting the ledge three times with minimal lag in the rare case it does whiff. A trio of kill throws is a huge boon against a character as light as Steve as well. Despite lacking a place in Ultimate's meta for years, Lucas might just be built to handle Steve, and Regalo showed every reason why at SmashCon. Now, 
One decent matchup does not turn a character into the anti-meta savior, but Regalo picked up big upset wins against two other emergent characters in the post-lockdown meta, Snake and Samus. Regalo dispatched Dark Samus' best representative from the last PGRU season, Siski, and against Apollo Kage, he showed exactly why PK Magnet alone makes Lucas a nightmare for Snake. Steve had the best total seed performance rating of any character at SmashCon, and Snake was second, and Regalo showed that Lucas has substantial answers to both of them. We had never seen a run like Regalo's, in part because Lucas simply doesn't have the answer for everything in the meta. As safe as many of his moves are on shield, most of his hitboxes are stubby, opening the door for huge whiff punishes if the opponent can keep moving. We saw that in Regalo's losses at SmashCon, to DeBuzz's Olimar and Light's Fox, both characters who have great options to swing through Lucas's pressure. While most players would dread the bracket Regalo was presented with, he might have been lucky to see the Steves rather than some of Ultimate's simpler top tiers. Part of the reason Regalo made history is that Lucas is an incredibly difficult character to optimize. Techniques like his dare and nair loops and his double jump cancel zare offer plenty of risk with their reward, often leaving Lucas wide open, and potentially without a double jump, after a miss input or poor spacing. And, with any floaty character like Lucas, something as simple as missing a fast fall can be the difference between a safe aerial and an unsafe one, and losing your stock. The fact that Regalo was able to execute with that character across nine set wins at Super Smash Con, including four best of five matches and sets against some of the strongest players in the world, and the strongest characters in the meta, is nothing short of impressive. He showed the world that there are answers to Steve, even if they are very, very, very specific, and that Lucas might just have a spot in the brave new meta that is Smash Ultimate in 2022. Now, the next question is if North Carolina's hero can push Lucas even further to a new frontier. Top 8 had an S tier. Thanks for watching, and hit that subscribe button to stick with PG Stats as we continue our coverage of the Summer of Smash at events like Shine 2022, Riptide, Lost Tech City, and so many more. My name is Last, and I do so hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time.